Two tactics in a week, you lucky, lucky people. And today we are looking at Roberto De Zerbi. He's kind of, it's a little bit of an all three between his three teams, Shakhtar, Sassoula, mainly looking at Brighton. I have looked in depth the last few games that Brighton have played and just looked at a few clips online of his time at Shakhtar and also at Sassoula. And with that, putting together a tactic in FM23. As always, Patreons, you get the tactic to download for free. Go and check that out over on the Patreon now. If you are interested in supporting me as a creator, being able to vote on the new tactics, which ones we do on the channel, an opportunity to win a free shirt every single month, go check out the Patreon links down in the description. Really appreciate it. If not, don't worry. I will go through all the player roles, player instructions, team instructions. We're also going to have a little look at a few little clips as well. It's a difficult one to put into FM, so this is the best we could possibly do, and I'm at a point that I'm really happy to show you how we've got it working. Okay, let's go. All right, everybody. So the main thing that we're trying to get with this is generally a 4-2-3-1. He has done well at Sassoulo. He did do a little bit of a back three at Sassoulo, but generally, in particular, as well at Shakhtar and now at Brighton, it's a 4-2-3-1. Now, the main thing that we're trying to recreate is his build-up. He has a build-up of a 4 and a 2. So a 4-2 build-up with a back 4 holding onto the ball and then two deep midfielders. It's really difficult to get this going. They are very, very patient. Often you'll see, I will link a video in the description, a great video by Tifo, which goes into detail about why a Brighton putting their foot on the ball. And this is kind of difficult to recreate in Football Manager, but at the same time, you do see it in Football Manager. You see sometimes your defenders stand still with the ball for no reason, but it does happen. So what we're trying to recreate is what they try and do is they hold on to the ball to try and bait the press, to try and encourage a team to come and press them so they can play around them. And as I explained in the video as well, they did it quite get well against Middlesbrough, sat back, tried to get the two sitters, Two strikers to sit in front of the two deep midfielders. However, once they hold on to the ball, occasionally it will encourage someone to go press. And as soon as that's triggered, they will then play a few couple of passes, keep possession of the ball. They're quite patient with it at the back. This is the most difficult thing because when they then transition into attack, it's then very quick. It's vertical tiki-taka. If you go and watch some of the goals and chances they've created over the last few weeks, you will see how quickly it springs into life. And it's quite difficult difficult to replicate that change from a slow tempo kind of build up very patient in that back in that back four waiting for the opportunity and then when they do get it they get an opportunity to go it's sprung out wide it's into the 10 it's played in little underlaps overlaps at times as well into those wingers who stay high and wide so it's kind of difficult to recreate but we have put this together with the hope that we can just see a few little glimpses of deserby ball now i'm going to be using this tactic for my stream save, it went horribly wrong last week with Fiorentina. Um, so we're going to start it again on Saturday night, 9.30, using this style of play and just see how we can build it over time. So make sure you follow the channel for that. Okay, so into the player roles. Sweeper, keeper, on defend, take fewer risks. Now, the reason why we've done that is because at times on support and on attack, it just keeps as FM does, they keep punting long balls. Now, I don't mind it because Sanchez does go long. When there's a high press, he does have the ability to find plays out wide. However, in FM, we don't really get a, a long pass. We get a long punt. And normally, when the keeper goes long, there's no one anywhere near it. We get turned over possession and it annoys me. So, we're trying to ask him to take a few risks and just keep possession of the ball. Right back has... Varied a lot. Gross has played there. He played there against Liverpool at weekend. Was very much inverted. Lamptey's obviously played little bits. And Veltman has played little bits as well. Now, the issue that we've got is that I put it on defend on this side. Because when they build up in a four, sometimes the defenders in particular one side, in particular as well, sorry again, this right-hand side, they don't start too high. So we don't want a full-back on attack or a complete wing-back on support or anything like that. I've done it on defend just so he has a deeper starting position. Okay. The two centre backs, ball playing defenders. See how you get on with that. I'm still getting those long punts every now and again, but they do do it. They do when the opportunity is there to transition. What they're trying to do is, Brighton, they try and suck that attacking unit in from the opponent. So you're looking at, yeah, you know, if they're playing a 4 2 3 1, you're two wide players, you're 10. 
Um, maybe trying to suck in two eights in here as well. And then that leaves a big hole in the middle of the pitch. So they'll suck players in, pass, 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 pass. And then someone will transition it over into the wide areas. Can they find a straight pass into maybe a number 10's feet? Maybe a number then a, a longer pass into maybe a Ferguson up front, dropping it on his chest, get it into his feet and him holding up the play. So the ball playing defenders are kind of there. Webster and Dunk both very, very good at it. Colwell as well. So I've got him on point, ball playing defenders. I'm going to see how it goes on stream on Saturday night. I think you can change this either way. You could put him on normal defenders and just ask them to pass shorter. We want him to pass shorter just so we can get this 4-2 going in build-up as much as possible. And then hopefully when the time is right, they will then play it long into the wider areas. Left back, just a little bit different. It is normally uh, Esper Purvis. We're going to go Purvis. We'll just go Purvis. He is a little bit more of an attacking wing back. So he generally gets a little bit high. You are seeing him in these areas a little bit. So we've gone for wing back on support there. Now, the, diff the most difficult role has been the Moses Casado role. Now, we've tried various different things. Now, looking at do deep line playmakers straight away, you will say that is not a thing. But what I'm trying to do is to get them to sit in front of the back four and be creative with the ball. We've done anchor man, and he doesn't do the creative balls that we want him to do. We've tried defensive midfielder. However, when he does that, defensive midfielder, his starting position goes a little bit too high. So I've put him deep playing playmaker on defence. He can do it. 15 at passing as well for Casado. Tremendous player. Let me know what you think about that. Obviously, we try, with that 4-2, we want to see the two defensive midfielders next to each other. Not like that. Not one pushing on. And it can't be a Volante. It can't be a, a really a roaming playmaker because they kind of just go all over the place. So I've asked him to go deep line playmaker on defend. And so far, it's worked quite well. No player instructions, I don't think. Or oh, tackle harder. Very important in particular when we lose the ball. And tackle harder again for the for the right side. Um, generally a gross. It's also been at times McAllister. It's also been Lalana. Um, Billy Gilmore's played a little bit, but generally one of those three there. Right, into the attacking four positions, and a lot of the current form has been down to these two players out in these wide areas. Unfortunately in FM, they're not as good as what they are in, in real life. So, Solly March scored two goals and an assist at the weekend. What we're trying to do with those is keep wide. If you look at their touch maps, their heat maps, I'll put a couple on as well from the weekend. They do like to be nice and wide, and it also gives the, the opportunity as well for these longer passes when you suck the press in to have them out wide, making the pitch as wide as possible. Can we get March and Mitoma 1v1? Both of them, uh, March has got to stay wide and tackle harder. Wing back on, uh, sorry, inverted wing back on support. And then Matoma, a little bit more attacking, but stay wider, tackle harder, in inverted winger on the attack duty. Now, this one, once again, with these two, I did have an advanced playmaker at once, but it, it depends who plays there. And in terms of the strike as well, once again, it depends who plays there. The number 10 at Sasulo as well, I was called, or oh, I think it was called Junic or Jukic or something like that. He was a little bit more of a classic, not a classic 10, but wouldn't be so much of a playmaker. He'd just been a standard attacking midfielder. Would still create, would still pass, would still make things happen, would, would but at the same time would get on the end of things, would hit balls from the edge of the area, etc. He had a good goal scoring record from one of those seasons. So I've gone with attacking midfielder on attack with the instruction, once again, tackle harder. Brighton, out of possession, very aggressive, very high line win the ball back. You watched the Liverpool game, I think the second goal, could have even been the first goal, when they broke the play down when Matip made the error. Just watch how they pounce. Go back, watch it on Match of the Day. There's a 20-minute video on Match of the Day. And also I will leave a link down in the description to a tremendous Twitter blog that my friend Dan uh, Gia sent me. He sent me this at the same time that I was actually doing research for it. It is a Google Drive document of all clips from the game in terms of how Brighton have set up. So if you really want to dive into it, there is about 30 odd clips of how they build up, how they transition, how they press, etc. Go check it out. I'll leave that down in the description as well. Okay, so that is those. This one up here is a number, he's difficult. He's played with an out and out striker. He's also played with a, you know, Ferguson. He's very much of a a target man, I suppose, can do pressing forward. He's not great in the game, obviously. He's a tremendous start to his career at, at Brighton. 
You know, Welbeck is maybe more of a pressing forward. I do like the idea of the presser. It's worked better with a presser rather than target man, just so we can get that someone breaking the lines a little bit more as well. Okay, moving over to the team instructions. Hopefully we've put something together that mixes that slow build up with the back four trying to bait out the press. Baiting out of the press was more prevalent when they were when he was manager at Shakhtar. Obviously, the favourites, the biggest club in Ukraine. A lot of teams, when they played against Shakhtar, went into lower blocks, so he needed something to try and bait. So that's what they do. They hold on to that ball. They hold, they hold, they hold. Sasulo, mid-table. Brighton, mid-table. And I think they've done really well against some of the bigger sides. In particular, obviously, Liverpool. They played really well against Arsenal as well and Southampton because teams that like to press a little bit higher gives them the opportunity to then play, play, play and get that pass into that final third. Positive mentality over to the team instructions a lot. I must admit there's a lot, but it's kind of what's been needed. All right. Fairly narrow. When they lose the ball as well, when they lose the ball as well, they're exceptionally narrow. I said, go check out the game against Liverpool and watch how narrow and compact they are. So, fairly narrow, but however, you will still get the width from the wide players. Not a problem. Play out of defence, obviously. And then what I'm asking them to do is focus play through the middle. Because we want to encourage that 4-2 and then that pass. They still get the ball out wide, but what they do is they wait and they wait and they wait for the right time to spring that ball out wide to create that 1v1. It's not quickly get it, can we get it out as quick as possible? They wait. And that's what we're trying to recreate with that. I did have pass into space on as well to start with, but I've taken it off just because we were punting the ball too far forward and we were turning over possession. They do like to play in those quick transitions. They do like to play, they make the passes and then a quick transition into those two wider players. Normally it can be a split pass. There was plas passes in between Matip, was it Matip and whoever's playing the right centre half and Trent at the weekend, playing them passes through for Matoma to run onto in particular, but we've taken it off just because FM was just encouraging punt rather than quality passes. Shorter passing, of course, because they, you know we want to keep the ball as much as possible. And then higher tempo. So obviously, the defensive third is lower tempo. So I'm trying to recreate the two here by having the bio di passing directness of shorter, having our two centre-halves asking them to pass short. We've got them two deep line midfielders who are going to come in naturally to the ball. So that will recreate that. And I'm just hoping with the higher tempo, it'll just encourage us to move that ball, progress that ball a little bit quicker. Crosses, work into the box. Pretty bog standard. Run at defence. We want those players. Even Moses Casado is quite good. We want that 10. We want the two wide players. We want Esper Purvis, the left back as well. Tyrick Lamptey, if he plays at right back to run at the defence. Be more expressive, very important. When we're doing shorter passing, just to make sure we have a little bit of creative expression and freedom in that final third. We don't want it like my Eagles save, where we're keeping, we're getting 60, nearly 70% of the ball sometimes and not creating anything. Out of possession, counter press, obviously, they do like to get the ball back as much as, as best they possibly can. Counter, and then counter attacking when we can. I may take that off on Saturday. I'm going to see how we go. I'm a little bit worried that sometimes we progress the ball a little bit too quickly, where we could just slow it down. You know, I said they want to build up steady at the back. So that's an option. Goalkeeper in possession... There's an, there's an argument that you could do slow the pace down because what they do is they get set, they get that four, they get that two in. And I think maybe, as it said, ask the keeper to operate at a slower tempo when in possession, perhaps in a bid to control the game. Control the game in, in terms of that defensive third when we've got possession, very important. So we, I would potentially maybe click that on. Distribute to centre half, roll it out to make sure we go short. Out of possession, high line, high press. I've done drop off more. Just because they do have that natural drop-off when the press has been beaten. That initial, you know, the front three. There is a drop-off to make sure that you don't get over, caught over the top. I think I'm, I've not trialled it yet in FM. But my worry would be a high line, high press with a defensive line in terms of stepping up more. You're just going to get caught with balls over the top. So that's why I've done drop-off more. And then trap outside. I think that all, that's, all I'm trying to encourage with that is... Is that when trying to encourage the, the, the unit, that, that attacking sort of like four and then the two behind to be really, really narrow and compact. That's the only reason why I've done that. Okay, that is the team instructions, player roles, player instructions. Let's go and see. Now, here's the league table. We've done okay. We're 12. It's not setting the world alight. It's not setting the world alight as I expected kind of with it. I think once we get a decent striker in, a few better players maybe in the wider areas will be okay. However, as I said, this isn't a tactical masterclass in terms of, I could score, look at this test, it could do 300 goals in 10 games. None of that bollocks. This is a true, in my eyes, a truer replication of how the tactic is done in real life. Okay? So... 
there it is, 12th. We're actually only four points off Everton. A couple of points off that tacking, the sort of like that top seven, top eight. So I'm quite happy with that. I said, if I was doing this as a long-term save, I'd look at trying to buy in a different striker. Uh, Danny Welbeck isn't one for scoring goals. And I think Brighton in real life, they need to go out this summer, spend big, to kind of not complete, but to really kick them on next season. Okay, so first little highlight is the 1-0 victory against Bright, uh, West Ham. We don't score from it, but just going to show you how the press started. So the goal, it's been a goal kick. The goalkeeper started, he's played it out to Colwell at left back. We've got our two sitters in there, Casado and McAllister. We've got the wing back on support and wing back on defend. All right, so ball playing options there. I suppose at the moment it's a little bit of a 2-4. I can't really get them to stand in line. I was hoping the wing back on defend would kind of bring him further back. But if I put him on a full back on defend, he's not going to offer anything in that attacking third. So we've kind of just got to go with it. But the build up player is really good. Colwell as well, if I just bring it back. Let's just bring it back from the goal kick. Watch, watch Colwell, he stands on the ball, which we're trying to recreate. So there he is. He stands and he waits because he's waiting for the pass and then we're off. But Callister comes in and this is what Brighton do. They get it and they give it. They wait for the opportunity. Espithutan has done really well there. Into Trossard. Into Gross. We should have scored. But basically with that, what we're trying to do is... Pass, 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 pass. And then when the opportunity is to transition, whether it's an overload on that left-hand side like we had then with his butte and then he could run forward, that's what we're trying to recreate. So just a little clip to show you once we get them passes in, how quickly we transition and get into that final third. I can't remember what the winner was like. Let's have a look at the winner. So free kick, Duncan Casado, Lalana, Trossard, two, I suppose, vertical quick passes, high tempo, pass, pass, pass. I said, go check out the goals from the Liverpool game. I think it was the first or the second one, I think. Yeah, it definitely wasn't, obviously, Danny Welbeck. Go check out the goals and how quickly, once they get into those attacking areas, how quickly they shift it. And what we've done in a lot of these games, we've always kind of edged the XG. Possession has been a little bit... I would like the possession to be a little bit higher, but we have naturally... There's a header from Welbeck. Um, but we have naturally edged possession. And then this one here is a little bit similar to the goal against Liverpool. So they're trying to get the ball. I think, once again, they, they brought the ball, nicked the ball. We get it in here. Break, very aggressive. Quick vertical pass and we're in. So remember, we've got that tackle harder so we can get in there quickly, press. Obviously, we've got that counter press, trigger press on more often as well so we can really dive in windows and then a quick vertical pass is a really good way of winning the ball and creating chances. And then once again, here we go. Trossard ends up scoring a goal, winning the ball back in the, actually in the penalty area. Uh, Colwell's just got it and then he's gone back. We've got our, once again, two defensive midfielders sat right in front of the defenders, just where we want them. And then they pass... Quick passes when they get the opportunity. Colwell down this left-hand side. Lovely pass into McAllister. The runner McAllister's brilliant. Welbeck's there off the bar. Trossard then wins it back in a high area and bangs it in. But once again, keep the ball. When the opportunity's there, they pass in. I'm really happy with how it's looking. Yes, the results could have been better. But as a starting point, I am really, really can't wait to see how this works with Fiorentina over maybe a, a, probably a better quality squad in terms of technical play areas, in particular the wide players we've got at Fiorentina. Probably a better striker as well because we've got Luka Hovic playing as a complete forward on attack. Um, Amrabat as, a de as the deep line playmaker. Yeah, we've got, I think, a better squad than Brighton, so I'm really interested to see how it does. I'll be streaming half past nine on Saturday night with Fiorentina with this tactic. And as I said, Patreons, go across to Patreon. Go and put it into your save or go and start a little... Start with Brighton or a club and let me know how it works for you. Thank you very much for watching. Any tactical ideas, teams, managers from modern era, past eras, let me know down in the description and we'll look at covering and we'll look at covering them over the next few weeks. Alright guys, take care. See you later.